Hey there again folks, welcome back <laughs> after a bit of a wait to Never 7, the end of infinity. We're back, we are indeed back. <laughs> uh, I got caught up on my streaming and I also got, you know, interested in wanting to know what Remember 11 was all about. I figured since it's the last in the series, it'll probably be really good, really advanced, which when I played up, I really have been pretty impressed, so stay tuned to that, or go look at the first three episodes, however you want to take that, uh, but I have left this, this one dangling pretty bad, it's, it's dangled as long as I want it to dangle, how many more times I can use dangle in this, let's play, I probably need to make that the last dangle, don't I, screw that up. So yeah, we're back here. Also, in the last video, I think I screwed up by going shopping. I believe I did. Can't remember exactly what the comment said because I, because I was stupid and didn't look at it right now. But I think I'm supposed to look for the bell first. So we're going to do that. I search, decide to search for the bell first. Hey, Creamy Chan. What? Um, why don't you... Wait, how was that? Was I reading all the characters? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. And it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been two, almost three weeks. That's crazy. Man. I have a horrible memory. Um, why don't you go shopping alone? Huh? Um, I remember that there's something important I have to do. Something important? There, um, uh, I have to go look for something I dropped. Something you dropped? You never told me you wore contacts, Yuka. <laughs> yeah. What was it? But that's, um... Kirby Chan looks at me with a curious gaze that screams, What is it? What is it? What is it? I must know or I will die. It's a memento. A memento? Uh, of who? M my great-grandfather. That's a lie. My great-grandfather is still alive in the countryside, lively as ever. Hell, he's even over a hundred years old. Mm hmm. Did she see through my lie? You get son? What? Let Kurumi help. Huh? Kurumi's saying she'll help you out. Because if it's something that important, then you absolutely need to find it. Isn't that right? Right, right? Yeah. And then Krimi Chan helps me look for the bell. Hey, is this really alright? I mutter these words in my mind as I turn towards the direction of the harbor. And thus, the search for the bell begins. I, I walk along the beach, relying on my vague memories. My eyes are as wide as saucers as I scan the beach. Shells and seaweed are washed ashore by the waves, only to be dragged back in. Occasionally, I'll carefully excavate something buried in the sand. The steady search continues to go on and on for nearly an hour. Can't find the bell. We've searched so much, but we can't find it. Has history really changed after all? Did someone else pick it up? Or is it still at the bottom of the sea? Bad thoughts flood my head, leaving me with no room to think of anything else. Uh, I let out an involuntary sigh and stretch myself out. My back tired from being bent this whole time. I look around in an attempt to ignore my feelings. A short distance away from me, Kurumi Chan slowly paces around while holding two bent tree branches in her hands. Could it be that she's trying to use dowsing? Hmm. I don't think there's any meaning in using tree branches. Even so, Krimi Chan is desperately searching. Gradually, I feel my chest grow hotter and hotter. 
she's doing everything she can to search for it, even though it's something someone else dropped. Inspired by her, inspired by her actions, I resume, I resume my search once again. Now that I think about it, now that I think about it, I feel like this happened in the past. I was searching for something very, very important. Right at, this, at that time, I was also looking for something very important. At that time, um... What was I looking for? You guys have a very similar memory to me. Can't remember. It feels like a rising bubble that stops just before it can reach the water surface. It's a memory of mine, but I barely remember anything. However, there are two things alone that I clearly remember. Number one, that object was something I considered to be a treasure. Number two, in the end, I never found it. A slightly cold wind blows by. And at that time, found it! What? I found it! Hey, Krumi, found it! Oh, that's right, she refers to herself in the third person. Hey, Krumi, found it, Yuka-san. Yuka-san? Oh, good grief. Krumi Chan runs over to me, one of her hands stretched out. She's holding something in that hand. Said object shines in the sunlight. It's the bell. Okay, this is it. This is it, right? You can sign. This is it. This is it. This is it, Krumi Chan. Really? Yay, what a relief. Krumi worked as hard as she could to find it. Yes, yes. You're a good girl, Krumi Chan. Don't get grief. I'm getting so excited, I'm going faster than the text. I gently pat Krumi Chan on the head. <laughs> I take the bell from Krumi Chan. The bell lands in my palm, making a high pitched sound. With this, I can say. Uh, what? Mm, oh, oh, proud. If you didn't find that memento, you, would, you wouldn't be able to save someone from what? Death? Yeah. Oh, that's. Krumi Chan looks at me with an inquisitive gaze that screams, Who is it? Who is it? My great grandma. It's a lie. My great grandma died three years ago. Yuka is a liar, apparently. <laughs> How's it going, Yuka? Did you find it? A while later, Makoto comes to Moon Beach. So Haruka, he had an errand to run and left temporarily. Despite what he said, I guess he was worried after all. Had Makoto be that concerned for me is kind of embarrassing, but it can't be helped. But I can't be helped but crack a smile. But I can't help but crack a smile. Hey, <laughs> hey, Ta-da! I probably show him the bell in my palm. This makes two life fun. He tries to say this, Makoto knows his Krumi and is taken aback. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Krumi Chan also helped out. Huh? Yuka-san said it was a memento of her great grandpa, so. Krumi looked very hard for it. Were you the one to find it, Krumi? Yeah. I see. You're a good girl. Makoto pats Krumi Chan on the head. <laughs> well, then I've got to go back now. Right. See you later. Makoto turns around. Without a moment's delay, I immediately draw close to Makoto. Here. Once this very faintly into Makoto's ear and place the bell in his palm. From the way I'm standing, my back acts as a wall that, so that Krimi Chan can't see us. This is yours, right? I say this and lightly tap Makoto on his shoulder. With this, there's no longer anything to worry about. Hold on, you two. What are you doing? The sound of her voice makes me jump and move away from Makoto. Nothing, really. It's, it's nothing. It's, it's nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. Is it? Is it? What you did just now was too suspicious. Oh, that's crazy talk. You think so? Of course. Krumi scrutinizingly glares at us while furrowing her brow. Well, let's see, Krumi. 
go to the port. Sprinting away as fast as he can. Ah, wait a minute, Oni Chan. <laughs> After uh, Makoto leaves, Grammy Chan uh, head towards the gift shop in his shopping district. Okay, I guess this is a. Uh, it just has a different order. Cause I think I remember them. Uh, I think I remember her buying the little cat keychain thing uh, in the last video. I think. Nevertheless, we have fun shopping just like last time. Even though it's my second time, I still buy a large amount of stuff. Right now, I've finished paying at the counter with a large sake bottle. I'm carrying in both my hands, being placed into a paper bag. I like how that's... I like how that's universal. <laughs> if you see somebody carrying a paper bag like this... Anywhere. It's... They're, they're drinking. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. I've seen that happen. <laughs> Creamy Chan is now at the counter buying something. While waiting for Creamy Chan, I decided to look around the shop's interior one more time. Suddenly my eyes caught by countless keychains dangling down from a nearby shelf. Oh, that's right. This is where I bought that keychain last time. I didn't buy it for anyone else. It was a souvenir for me. I approached a group of keychains as if they're luring me in. And then, in order to find my target, I have to check every single one of the keychains. Huh? What? But the keychain I bought back then isn't there. Hmm. Is this the wrong shop? No, that's not it. It was definitely this one. I might have overlooked it. I'll look for it one more time. But I can't find it, no matter how many times I look. The keychain with the fat cat mascot attached to it. Can't find Nin Nin Neko Pion. Um, excuse me? You have a keychain with a fat cat mascot attached to it here? I ask a passing shop, a store clerk. There's no way that they'll know what I'm talking about. Even so, it doesn't hurt to ask. Huh? Oh, that keychain. That, that's it. That's definitely it. Where, where is it? We're sold out. We're sold out. It's kind of a rare keychain, you see. If it's not there, then that means we've run out of stock. Thanks for waiting. We bought so much that they gave Kurumi some postage stamps for free. I love when stores give me free postage stamps. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can mail stuff now. That is so useful. <laughs> it kind of is, actually. I mean, sometimes you do need to mail stuff. Maybe only like once a month, but I mean, that saves you a, a few cents. And Woo! <laughs> but it does seem like a silly constellation uh, slash get one free thing. But what's wrong, you son? Good grief. Ninja cough. That's fine. And then the... <laughs> With all our business concluded, we leave the shop. <clears throat> I walk with my shoulders slumped, heart broken. Krimi Chan is at my side, clearly worried about me. I feel depressed as if there's a gaping wide hole in my heart. It's a tormenting feeling of loss. It's probably because of that keychain. Hey, what's wrong? You've been totally down since the gift shop. Totally down. But that's not true. You see, this Krimi's never seen you look this depressed before. It's about the same as you were on Moon Beach when you were looking for that lost object of yours. Lost object? An important thing that I couldn't find? A lost treasure. The bowl finally reaches the top of the water, the sleeping memory within me having been revived. That's it. That's why I wanted that keychain so much. We go out onto the paved road. While doing so, we walk while talking about trivial things. I don't remember her losing anything last time. Hmm. And then you see Oni-chan. 
Uh, uh, Krimi Chan laughs loudly. She's having fun laughing at this random story, but I still can't laugh like Krimi Chan. Because I remembered. Because I came to this seminar camp, I remembered too much of my past. One by one, one by one. Back then, in that memory, I had talked to someone. I was sad and stable and felt like I had been abandoned. Hey, yuka -san. Hmm, what is it? That keychain that was sold out. Was it really that special? Because ever since then, you've been acting really weird. Stop walking. Kumi Chan comes to a halt. For a little while, I'm a bit hesitant about whether or not I should talk about it. That keychain was. But then I make up my mind to tell her. That keychain was. Kind of the spitting image. Of an important treasure from when I was young. A small cat keychain. The cat on the keychain was called Nin Nin Nekopion. <clears throat> Even though it was small, it, was, it wasn't cute at all. It had a scratch on its forehead, shaped like a cross or a shuriken. It was pretty ugly. <clears throat> now the scratch was exactly like a shuriken. So, so you mean the Nin Nin part of its name came from the ninja? Where else would it come from? That's right. The cat keychain wasn't cute in the slightest, but it's a precious uh, treasure to me. It was a very, very important treasure that I received from a special person. I attached it to my backpack and would go to school with it. Strict and say, it's keychains, but you know, she got it back when she was that uh, that age. Most people aren't carrying around keys, but I guess it's just something that, you know, I guess it, it really is just a fashion statement. I suppose is what it is. I just always had my backpack. And by the end of the year, it would be torn up to, it'd actually be shredding. But then one day, I lost it. Huh? In the past, when I was in first grade in elementary school, I had no sense of direction, so I would frequently get lost. That day, I was lost too. I was returning from school, and I hurried on home. As there was a TV show I really wanted to see that I had to make that I had to make it in time for. But when I but when it seemed I wouldn't make it in time, I thought to use a shortcut. It was a shortcut my friend told me about the previous day. I didn't recognize that street at all, so before I knew it, I had wandered astray. I was an idiot, I guess you could say. I didn't know my limits. In the end, I got lost and forgot all about the TV show. I continued to wander around these unknown places while crying like a baby. But, I came to my senses, and before I knew it, I was standing in front of my house. And then, suddenly, I looked at my backpack, and the kitty keychain was gone. Yeah, must have dropped it while I was lost. When I was wandering through the back alleys, my backpack rubbed against the walls, which most likely, which is most likely when it happened. But at that time, I didn't suspect that the cat didn't come all the way home with me. Did you look for it after that? Of course I did. The next day, I brought along a friend who knew that shortcut well. But say, that's a good way to get more lost, to go and get lost again and lose even more stuff. Oh crap, I lost my shoe on the way. Gotta go look for the keychain and my shoe. Oh my gosh. Lost my backpack, I don't know. <laughs> for hours and hours we searched the area until it became pitch black outside. But we didn't find it. When the time came for me to go home, I had lost that small cat. I thought she was actually going to say that it reminded her of her own cat or something. That would be an interesting uh, idea. But never mind, never mind. And now I've lost it again. That store clerk said they had that fat cat keychain, but... And once again I lost it as a result of the bell. Oh crap, what'd she say? 
Didn't you say earlier that those two keychains were the spitting image of each other? Yeah, I did. But, but the first one was a small kitty and the second one was a fat kitty. So they don't resemble each other at all, do they? When you put it that way, that's true. That, that's true? But they're similar. When I first saw it, I definitely thought that they resembled each other. Even if their appearances are different. Is this... Is this the comparison between Makoto and that other dude? Is this, is this what they're referencing? I feel like that's what they're referencing. Here. Yuka-san. That's right. Even though they don't look alike, they're still spitting images. I sit down on the living room sofa and let my thoughts wander. They, they needed to go for a walk. I think it took us 15 minutes to arrive at the lodge. Just as predicted, Saki and Haruka's quarrel never happened. <clears throat> While Izumi-san is making dinner in the kitchen, everyone passes the time as they please. Haruka is sitting next to me, watching TV, while Saki stands by the window as she looks outside. Krimi-chan is, uh, is uh, sitting on the floor in the middle of the uh, folding some origami. Okay, Gokun is lying on the in the loft with an ice pack on his face. Seems that Makoto punched him. It seems as if Makoto punched him. Makoto is in the dining room, humming while setting the table. Man, I'm getting to where I can't talk. The song he's humming is a recent and popular one. But he's completely off key, and so I desperately try to hold back my laugh. He's painfully toned down. Looking at this very peaceful scene causes us the shock of losing the keychain to fatal fatal. Casually walk over to the dining room. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. It's a bit of a short one, but it's again I'm gonna be getting back to it daily. I'm gonna finish this up, going to get to remember eleven again. Resume that. And then forward. Uh so anyway, I do hope you folks enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one. Farewell there.